I've taken apart my Galaxy S4. I have two of them. One had a cracked screen. I don't know if you can see that. The screen is shattered. This one, the screen's perfectly good, but I put a custom ROM on there. And I ended up bricking the phone. <clears throat> I could redo the ROM, but I want to go back to stock. The stock uh, operating system because I did not do a backup before I did the custom ROM. So I want to capture the backup first. So basically what I've done, I've taken the motherboard off the S4 with the good screen, bad ROM, and I'm going to replace that motherboard with the motherboard from the phone that has the, cr the uh, cracked screen. I'm sorry if you can't see my hands. Or... There, I turned the light on. Basically, there's just one screw there on the motherboard. You need something plastic so you don't scratch the motherboard when removing the LCD screen right here. It just pops off. I'm using a SIM card. Actually, I can pull this off with my hands. That pops off right there. <clears throat> Here you got your proximity sensors, your LED notification light. That's what we're about to hook here. Your digitizer cable right here. This is the uh, menu capacity button here, and it just fires up to the. So all those are a pair of tweezers, small Phillips screwdriver. Just slightly pull those up. I don't need to pull it all the way off. And the motherboard is actually ready to come out. The camera's still attached. I will pull that off here in a second. So here's the first camera from the first motherboard. Actually, I'm just going to leave this one attached the way it is. And what I'm guessing is just simply by replacing the motherboard, I should be able to replace the ROM. So I'm dropping it. Get that under Get this one under over. And it should just slide into place here. There we go, no problems. This should just snap that down. Well, actually, I'm going to go ahead and screw it down before I attempt to snap it. Like I said, there was just one screw for the motherboard. Let's screw this right there. Your motherboard is nice and secure. These should just line right back up. I do apologize if you can't see. Actually, fill them snap. I 
is not. And this one didn't feel that secure yet. Uh, SD card. There we go. And it snapped on. What I'm going to do before putting the frame on. This here is just the speaker for uh, the phone. Everything looks good. Everything is secure. This just snaps back on. You can hear it snapping. and tight all right so there's the screen screen new motherboard is on now we simply have to replace the speaker It also snaps back on. Speakers in. And there are about six screws that need to go back in the phone. screw them all down tightly till I get them all in and these screws are all the same so you don't have to worry about which one goes where but they are quite small So to replace the screen would have been about $250. Like I said, I had two phones here. One was rooted, one wasn't rooted. And I sort of ended up in a boot loop with the custom ROM this morning. So instead of paying for someone else to do it I just jumped on YouTube found a couple videos I liked and followed their examples some of the tools they used I supplemented simply with a piece of plastic that I got from the SIM card. Let's move the camera. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing a little better. Of course, this is being recorded with a iPhone 5S. Although I get extremely bored with the operating system iPhones are one of those products that always work. It's a reliable phone. The S4 Android system is reliable, but when you get into doing custom ROMs, 
I've had countless numbers of uh, Androids and I've done custom ROMs on the majority of them and actually I've only bricked one of them one time I bricked one on purpose just so I could get a replacement probably should admit that but yes I messed up the operating system on purpose so I could get a new phone Two more screws here. Let's see. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now, if this doesn't work, I'll be highly surprised. And I'll be really shocked. And one of the things I found when I put on that Cyanogen mod CM11, I couldn't encrypt the SD card. There's software I could have downloaded from, or apps I could have got from the App Store that would encrypt the information, but I would have to unencrypt it every time I wanted to see photos or videos. And for those of you with sensitive data, that just wasn't a viable choice for me. If I lost my phone, someone could see my pictures, video. It was too much of a pain to encrypt it, decrypt it every time I wanted to see something. Alright, everything looks good. We're going to pop the SIM card in, pop the memory card back in, here's the battery, and let's see what we get. Well, pushing the home screen won't do anything. Power button needs to be pushed. So Samsung Galaxy S4. And it looks like we're back in business. And there my face just popped up. And it looks like we're in business. There you have it, the phone's unlocked now. Everything is working the way it was before I cracked the screen. Tell me I need to sign into my Google account, which I won't do right now, of course. Phone screen works good. Let's see what's up with the camera. Camera's working just fine. I don't know if you can see the pictures coming in the corner there. Video's working just fine. Brand new phone. I just got a message from Facebook. 
everything looks to be working great. 